Welcome back to Z-Speed, and thanks for tuning back in. Today we'll be replacing the stock Honda Civic SI head unit with a nice high definition 9 inch join aftermarket head unit with the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So if you're interested in learning how to install one of these in your Civic, just stay tuned. Now the awesome thing about this join aftermarket head unit is that it's an actual plug and play system, which means there's no splicing or trying to figure out the wiring on your own. It actually has a harness that plugs directly into your vehicle's existing electrical setup. Now the tricky part is that the Honda Civic does come with three different trim levels or three different radio setups. So you do need to be careful when you're choosing this uh, head unit from the website to make sure you get the proper wiring harness for your vehicle itself. So first thing we'll do is kind of go through the join head unit website and figure out which head unit wiring harness that you have. Okay, so let's go to Google and type in join, and this will take you straight to the website. So click just join, and then you'll be able to find this website. This is the official website right here. Click on Android car stereo units, and then we're gonna go to Honda, and then we're gonna choose between nine inch or a 10.1 inch. So I'm gonna go with the nine. I just like that version better either one and then it's the second one over this is for the honda civic 2016 through 2021 and the current price is 439 bucks i think it's well worth it the uh join did not sponsor me i bought this with my own cash and this is one of the nicer head units i could find for the civic um i think it's worth it and this is some of the information up here the main thing to pay attention to is that you have uh four gigs of ram and uh 64 gigabytes of ROM available with this head unit, which makes it pretty quick. Uh, I don't have any issues with a uh, lag at all, but if you want to go even faster, you could add um, eight gigs of RAM and 128 of ROM for 60 more bucks, but you really don't need that. But here's the part we need to pay attention to is which harness A, B, or C, uh, two without the factory amplifier and one with, and I'm choosing the one with the factory amplifier because that's what the Civic SI comes with is the one with the head unit with the uh, factory amplifier. Let's page down on this same page, go towards the bottom here and we can take a closer look. We have A, B, and C. This is the base unit that comes in your Civic if you've got the lowest uh, grade uh, head unit, which is your base model. And it's pretty easy to tell if you've got that one. So you're gonna choose A if that's it. And then B looks just like C in my book. It looks just like the head unit in my um, SI, but it does not have a factory amplifier. So this is the one you wanna choose if you don't have a factory amplifier. And then last but not least, here's C. This is the one that comes in the uh, Civic SI model. And it looks just like the B, but it has a factory amplifier. And this is the harness setup that you're gonna get with that. So the only difference is on the back of the head unit, you're gonna, you're gonna see this power amplifier interface right here, this little white coupling. That's the only difference between B and C, honestly. And if you don't know which one you have, which I didn't, I had to actually pull the stereo um, out and look at the back just and found out that I had the uh, amplifier. Then I went ahead and ordered the correct harness. So unfortunately you may have to pull your stereo if you're not sure if you have B or C, but A is very obvious. If you've got that one, you're gonna select that harness and um, you won't have to worry about anything. But B and C, you may have to pull the head unit to figure it out. It's not a big deal, so don't worry about that. If you have to, it's pretty easy. Uh, let's see, we'll go back up to the top. There are some other options you can choose. I think like a high def rear view uh, camera and a tire um, pressure monitoring system, stuff like that you can add to your car stereo, but I think just the base head unit 439 is more than sufficient. 
So let's take a look at the box and you can see there's no fancy um, advertising going on here. It's just a simple plain white box that came inside of another uh, packing box that kept it safe. But once I remove that, then we've just got this simple setup here. You got some instructions, not too elaborate instructions. But don't worry, we're gonna go through it in depth. We've got a bunch of connectors here. Um, just depending on you know which harness setup you choose, there's this is the uh, amplified version with every little possible connector that you can imagine. Um, it's got quite a lot going on with it that we're going to connect to the back, but we're going to go through that step by step, so don't worry. And I also picked up the uh, tire pressure monitoring system. I'm not sure if I want to use that right now, but I have it if I need it. And. Yeah, so we'll just go ahead and get everything out of the box before we um, take our head unit out of the car. But this, I think that's the 4G antenna. And here's the actual harness itself that hooks up to the amplified version of the head unit. This is a little bulky, but not too bad. And then we just have the actual stereo head unit in here itself. Now this thing's pretty light. It's much lighter than the actual car stereo head unit that's in your car, which comes into play a little bit later. It's gonna help us out. But you can see that um, this thing is pretty well packed and it's not gonna get messed up, hopefully. Um, one thing I did notice is that it doesn't actually have a um, screen protecting fil protective film on here. So this little bag is the protective film. So don't really take this out of the bag until you're ready to install it because there is no protective film on the screen itself and you don't want to scratch that screen. But yeah, here's the back. And you can see you have a little tenna array here. You've got some uh, little coverings back here and you've got the USB uh, port right here. So now we're gonna go ahead and uh, remove the head unit from the car itself. So when it comes to installing and removing electrical components, it's very highly recommended that you go ahead and remove the negative battery cable from your uh, car so that we don't have any short circuits or electrical mishaps. You don't wanna fry something before we even, uh, you know, get to use it. So make sure you go ahead and be, play it safe and remove your negative car battery cable. So the good news is there's just four Phillips screws and a couple panel pieces here. We're gonna remove this one right here first. Then we're going to the passenger side. We're gonna remove this little piece of trim as well. And then that'll give us access to the uh, four bolts inside here. And then this thing comes right out. It's really easy to get this out. Uh, I think pulling the trim off is probably the trickiest part, but it's not that bad. Okay, plastic panel removal tools are gonna to come in clutch here. You really don't wanna do it with a flathead screwdriver. You might scratch this part of your trim up, but we're gonna come in right in here and just go real slow. You can see I got it to lift up a little bit. I'm gonna work it a little bit more. I'm gonna go kinda of down the side here and just lift straight up. Now that's the easy part, but the top portion of this little trim panel would be easy to break, so you wanna be careful. Come in up top right here, and you can see I'm just gonna go nice and slow and kinda of work it. If this thing's never been uh, removed before, it's gonna be real hard to remove. Once you've done it a couple times, it's easier. But these are the four tabs that hold this trim piece in. So now I'm gonna show the removal of the passenger side trim just to make sure you've got the idea and technique uh, down here. Remember, just go nice and slow towards the bottom, lift straight up. Don't pull all the way up because you'll snap the end off. Once you get it to this point, you're gonna come up top with your plastic panel removal tool and just lift up, bam, just like that. Now that is the hardest part of removing your car stereo, believe it or not, that's it, that's the hard part. Next up, the climate control switches need to be removed. We've got a Phillips right here and one on the opposite side right there. So just get your Phillips screwdriver and we're gonna go ahead and remove these two. Just make sure you don't misplace these things. Um, set them somewhere safe. So go ahead and remove those two. And once you get these out, now you're going to need a plastic panel removal tool 
once again to help kind of uh, displace this climate control switch. It doesn't take a lot of force. You can see here, they pop right out. Just be gentle with them. And then you have a couple of connections connecting uh, the climate control switches. Just push tabs. That one was very easy. This one right here, the tab is underneath on the, or on the bottom part. So uh, it took me a second to figure that out. And then once I figured that out, it was easy to remove. So just these two components holding this in, set this aside in somewhere safe. Okay, now that the climate control switches are removed, you can easily visualize the two, that's it, just two bolts holding the um, mounting brackets to the factory head unit into the car. So that's it, that's all we have to remove these two. You can use a Phillips screwdriver or a 10 millimeter socket to remove these. I'm just gonna go ahead and use my little uh, trusty Phillips screwdriver here to remove these two. And once you get these removed, then we're going to be tugging side to side on the head unit to release it. So here's my last bolt right here. And now I'm gonna grab the passenger side first, pull it, boom, that comes loose. Now pull the driver's side and now this thing pops right out. You can see those three white tabs on the side there. That's what's holding this thing in. Um, so you don't have to go crazy with it, just be gentle. And now that I'm pulling this thing out, I've noticed that the harness is pretty tight back here. It doesn't want to let me pull it out much further. So I think I'm gonna just disconnect the harness from here. Okay, let's start detaching the factory head unit harness from the top and work our way towards the bottom of this uh, stereo system here. And I've got a little small flathead screwdriver to help assist me with these stubborn clips here. And trust me, there's a couple that are a little harder to release with your fingers alone. So that's why you might want to have a very small flathead screwdriver to help you. But it's not too bad. You can see I'm, I'm using the flathead here to get this one loose. And that one came out pretty good. No problems there. Uh, here's a little one down here I can get with my fingers. So I think that's part of the... Um, the uh, radio antenna, but I'm not positive on that one. So we're just gonna go through methodically, one by one, top to bottom, and release every one of these. Believe it or not, there's 12 points of attachment on this thing. Yep, I'm not joking, 12 points. There's actually 13, but one doesn't have to be detached because it's like uh, a little clip in the back that hooks a little part of the front of the stereo. So go through nice and slow and just release each one of these. As, as you release these clips, you'll be able to pull the factory stereo head unit further and further away from the dashboard here, which makes it easier and easier to get your fingers in there and actually visualize. So at this point, you can see I can look down and see these clips and it'll be a little bit easier because I can actually visualize them and try to figure out where to squeeze these two. Same with the uh, ones on this side over here on the bottom. But yeah, you're gonna go, go through clip by clip and uh, unattach all of these. Once you get those all done, there's one, believe it or not, underneath the uh, factory head unit. It's right here. So you're gonna squeeze that one and release it. And then that harness itself has a little plastic uh, fastener that's actually hooked to the bottom side of the head unit. So you can't just pull it out at that point. You have to get a pair of needle nose pliers and squeeze this little um, plastic tab that actually attaches the harness to the bottom side of the stereo mounting bracket, believe it or not. This thing is in there. They didn't They didn't want you to get this thing loose. I mean, they want to make sure this thing was in there for life. So you're going to have to fight with it a little bit, but eventually... Uh, I won and I got it out. So this is the last tab that's holding this thing in. Now we can slide this monstrosity out of the dash itself. So that's it. We're finally free of this big old thing. So here's a closer look at this last one that's underneath the head unit. You clip it there and uh, push the tab and slide it out. And then there's the little plastic clip that you're gonna to have to detach from the stereo uh, mounting bracket right there. Just squeeze that together and pull this right here away from the mounting bracket. And then you can get it out of the uh, dash. 
So if you thought I was joking about the 12 points of attachment, let's count them out and I need to show you uh, something important. One, two, three, four, five, six. Stop right here. This is the clip you'll have if your uh, head unit is amplified. If it's not amplified, that will be missing. So if you pull it out, you're not sure if that's there, it's amplified. If it's not, it's not amplified. So there's six and we'll resume seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So yeah, there's your 12 points of attachment. The 13th uh, one stays attached and it's plugs in underneath the head unit. Unbelievable that this thing needs uh, so many points of attachment for the harness, but we're gonna eliminate most of that with the new harness setup. Um, you can see this uh, back of this thing is much smaller and more condensed and easier to work with. So and it's super light compared to the um, stock head unit. So the harness, that comes with the join head unit is um, condensed and it's kind of bundled up here. This is one harness. It's all zip tied together, but it needs to be. And that just plugs into the back of the new head unit. So this new harness is a lot less cumbersome when it comes to attaching it to the back of your new head unit. But now we're gonna focus on these two mounting brackets here, one on each side. Um, you do not have to use these. I, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to put them on here because I thought you needed them. Um, but it, once you get them into the car, you'll realize that the bolts, factory bolts don't, uh, aren't long enough and you can't really attach it um, back the way it came out of the vehicle. So it's really unnecessary to use them because this new head unit is so light, you really don't need these mounting brackets to stabilize. This is just because this thing is so bulky and heavy, uh, they needed this extra bracing on the sides. But we're gonna go ahead and put them on and it, uh, in case you decide you wanna use them. But you can see it's just three bolts and it comes right out piece of cake and then we're gonna go ahead and reattach them to our new join head unit and we're only going to use two of the screws versus three because there's only two points of attachment on the join head unit so um, that's the only difference once you're reattaching them to your new head unit it's just these two bolts right here on each side versus three so now that we've got that on here we do uh, have to take these little plastic tabs off right here. These three on each side uh, need to be removed and placed onto your new head unit right here. That's what's going to keep it attached to your um, dashboard here. So very important, you need to be careful with these. You don't wanna break them. And it's, I tried to remove it um, with my fingers and it wasn't actually that easy, but if you use a small screwdriver, and I use an exacto knife on one side and kind of spread both sides at the same time, it'll pop right off then. You don't have to use a lot of force either. You can see it just pop right off. So just go through and pull each one off and reattach it to your new head unit. So this is the wiring diagram that comes with the head unit. There's not a lot of instructions that come in with this thing, but this one's pretty beneficial. It kind of shows you where things plug into the back of the head unit. So we're gonna go ahead and work on plugging everything in while it's out of the vehicle. This is your main part of your um, harness here with the canvas set up on it right here. And then the little gray pl uh, plugs that plug into the vehicle itself. And then this is the main part of the harness that plugs into the back of the head unit right here. So that's not too difficult, but it also, we do have a little um, information about how to set up the nav unit. We're not gonna really look at that right now. And we do have um, a specialty area over here with the wiring. So if you're gonna do some aftermarket components like aftermarket, um, let's say um, amplifier or something like that, it'll show you what wire does what. So that might be beneficial if you're doing something with aftermarket parts, but we're not gonna be doing that. We're gonna do the plug and play version. So the easiest thing to do is attach the harness to the vehicle first, then attach it to your head unit. But we're gonna do it while it's sitting on the bench here. So I'm gonna remove this little cap right here. And we're gonna start off with our GPS uh, antenna first. So we're just doing this so you can see everything clearly and you it'll take out some of the guesswork hopefully. Um, this GPS antenna has actually screws in to the back of this little connector here. Now the GPS antenna 
uh, has a magnet on it, so it will sit on top of a metal surface, but it cannot be placed underneath a metal surface. So we're gonna show you how to put it in the dashboard, but we wanna put it on top of anything metal. Um, it'll, it can be under plastic and it's not gonna affect it at all, but it can't be under metal. So that's why it's got a magnet. It wants to attach to a metal surface and then just have plastic above it, like the plastic dashboard, and then it'll work correctly. Okay, next up we have the SIM card reader. This little piece right here, you can place a SIM card in there and run internet only for like 20, 30 bucks, but we don't really need to use this because we're gonna pair it with our Android or our iPhone and run our whole system off our phone. So don't worry about that unless you're in another country. This part right here, you can plug an extension to a USB port and run it into your glove compartment and power an MP3 player. And that's what I'm gonna do with that. These two pieces right here, this is the one you're gonna need um, to hook up to your radio. Uh, the other piece is a bypass if you have a touring model um, version of a Civic, you'll need to bypass your antenna. We'll talk more about that later, but this is the part you'll need for your car. And then you have an external mic that plugs in right here. Now you have an internal mic if you wanna use that, or this external mic for a little better clarity if you wanna plug that in and then run it underneath your uh, steering column. You can do that. It might give you a little more clarity when you're on the phone talking to someone but you can get away with the internal mic if you don't wanna use this, but I'm gonna go ahead and use this. I'm gonna plug this in and uh, mount this underneath my steering column and uh, hope that it gives a little better clarity when I'm using my phone. So if you wanna see what it looks like in the car, there's the mic, here's the steering wheel, and here is your mic, and it slides right here. Good spot for it, a little clip. It's a little bit loose, uh, so if you want to use some double-sided tape to stabilize it, I'm not really worried about it. I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. And then I ran the wire um, underneath, and then I have it coming out back and behind the dashboard right here. So it'll plug right into the stereo, no problem right here. Next up, we have two 4G antenna arrays, plugs in here and here. We're gonna put it underneath the speaker, underneath the dash right here. So we're just gonna lift that speaker up just like that. And we're gonna kind of clean this area off in here because there's double-sided tape on those. And we're gonna find a place to uh, stick the GPS antenna and the four, two 4G antennas right in this area right here. It's not too hard at all. So once you get your speaker pulled out, um, and which is pretty easy to do, it lifts right out. Um, we can clean this area off and stick our antennas in here. Okay, once you get all the dust removed from underneath the dash here, we can go ahead and place these two antennas, something like this, uh, one on each side. And all you have to do now is just peel the 3M backing off and place this little 4G antenna on top of the plastic under here. It's really easy to do, nothing complex at all. And it sticks really well, so it's not gonna go anywhere once you place it in here. And I got one done, now we're gonna face this one the opposite direction. Piece of cake right in here. So once you press them down in there, they're stuck there. And this is what it looks like when we're all done. Something like that, anywhere in this area is fine. And that's all there is to it. So this little wiring right here goes to your speaker and we'll place that back on when we're done. But yeah, piece of cake right there. And the wiring comes out right here and you can plug it to your head unit. Now, as far as the 4G antenna that's magnetic that we talked about earlier, you can place it on the other side of this metal brace right here. It'll fit perfect right there and I did it and it worked great. So yeah, we're all set here and we can put the speaker back in now. And now the 4G antennas, they screw right into these two little uh, couplings right here. So just remove these two little covers and it screws right in here. Okay, next up we're gonna hook up the right and left audio to these two spots right here, front right and front left. Now next to it you have uh, rear right and rear left and technically you should have four RCA jacks to use the fader correctly to fade from the front speakers to the rear speakers. Um, I contacted Joins and asked them, do I have the right harness? They assured me I did and that's it. That was the end of the conversation. They said, you've got the right one. That's all folks. And I'm telling you, you need four RCAs to fade completely to the rear. 
Um, and we don't have that here. Now, if you're running the non-amplified version, this may not affect you, but basically when I fade all of my um, speaker power to the rear, I have nothing, no sound at all. Um, when I got all four speakers running, it works fine, and then the front speakers, it works fine. But when I go completely to the rear, it won't work. I used ended up using some splitters to get around this situation. I'll show you that in a second, but um, that's an issue if you're running the amplified version. If you're not running the amplified version, you're probably okay, I'm not sure. But Join seemed not to understand what I was trying to tell them. But uh, it's not the end of the world. You can still run the front and all four. So don't worry about that. Only if you want to run the rear only. That's a problem then. So a workaround, um, not a true workaround, but a workaround is to order these from Amazon. Uh, a female to male right here. And that'll split into four RCA jacks like I wanted to begin with. But yet it won't completely fade uh, front to rear, you'll still have all four speakers working, but there won't be any dead zones when you go completely to the rear. It's not a true split. It's, I don't know if it's really worth it to you to do that, but I went ahead and ran the splitter anyway. So, you know, as far as when it's in the car, you just hook the splitter up to your red one, and then you hook the other one up to your white one. And now you've got two red ones and two white ones to plug into all four RCA jacks in the head unit there. So. You won't at least have any dead spots when you go completely to the rear, but it's not a true fade. Um, you'll need an upgraded harness really to get a true fade. Okay, next up we have two attachments for your two existing USB ports that are already mounted in your car, one underneath the dash and then one between the passenger and the driver's seat. There's one down in there. So you just plug these into the back of the stereo head unit and then the other end attaches to the harness from the car and those will power the two existing USB ports that you already have. That last one we talked about earlier, um, I ran that into my glove compartment for my MP3 player, but yeah, these will run the existing ones. Okay, last but not least, we have the aux cable hookup. We have a yellow, red, and white cable we're gonna plug in to the row on the far left-hand side. You can see it says aux and cam. Right here, this row right here, take these covers off, plug them in, and then we're all set. It looks like this right here. Now we're ready to take this harness and plug it into the car itself. So we're gonna go ahead and start doing that next. Okay, to get started, we're gonna just gently set the head unit down um, by the stick shift area and the climate control switch area, which is now missing at this point. We're just gonna kind of rest it right here, and we're gonna begin the uh, process of just attaching all the um, plugs. Now, first I'm just gonna start off with my um, Ford, not my 4G, this is my GPS antenna. And then the 4Gs are gonna be next, but now at this point, I'm gonna go up on and place this little magnetic uh, antenna on top of that brace that we showed you earlier. And it fit in there nicely. It just clicked right on there and it wasn't gonna go anywhere. So that was a good spot for the, um, the GPS antenna. No problems with that. And that's up there and nice and snug. We're just gonna place the extra wire right here. Now I'm gonna hook up the two 4G antennas right here. Just screw these in to the little ports. Uh, it doesn't take too much effort at all. And we got both of those done. Now we're just gonna go through the process of hooking each uh, of these up. Now this is the actual uh, radio antenna. Uh, that was the first thing I decided to attach and I just went through methodically. The good news is this truly is a plug and play. You will end up finding uh, only components that will fit just one of these attachments at a time. I mean, I ended up attaching every single one. It only had, there was no way you could attach the harness to the wrong coupling. It only fit one way. This is the only piece I had left um, this is the SI, so if you have an SI, this is probably the only one you're not gonna use. Uh, so it was a 99% plug and play, and one one of the plugs it was not needed. So other than that, all these other plugs plugged up, and there was only one way to plug them in, 
Uh, there was no way you were going to accidentally plug the harness into the wrong connector. So this is the only one I didn't use. And now we're gonna go ahead and just start tucking all these uh, wires down in here. So you can see that we're gonna just push them down back into this area. There's a nice little cubby hole down in there that you can uh, push the wire harness down into. And this head unit is so light that you can easily hold it with one hand, unlike the OEM stereo. And as you hold it with one hand, you can start to tuck the wire harness back into that cubby hole with your other hand. So <clears throat> that's the nice thing about this whole setup is it's much lighter and obviously it's a much better head unit too. So here I go now, I've got it up in the air and I'm gonna go from underneath to finish tucking the harness back in there. And it doesn't take a lot of force, you just kind of slowly go. And we're gonna go ahead and line up the head unit here. And the good news about the uh, fitment is that it's spot on to the OEM uh, head unit. It mounts up in the exact same spot and there's no issues at all. So we're gonna go ahead and just slowly line it up. And once we've got the harness tucked in good enough, we can go ahead and push the uh, head unit into the dashboard and it clicks right in. So no issues there. Um, it fit perfect. So next I'm gonna show you why you don't need the OEM um, metal mounting brackets because look at this, there's a lot of space between the bracket and the uh, plastic uh, mounting points in in the dashboard. There's a big space. You need a spacer and a much longer bolt to get these to work. So they sit too far forward at this point. But you know, you really don't need these uh, mounting brackets anyway because this head unit is so light. I mean, it's feather light compared to the OEM head unit. So I'm gonna pull this thing out and just take these brackets off so I can, you know, tuck the harness even better in back there. Just tuck it a lot better. Uh, into that cubby hole area. But now we're gonna go ahead and hook the climate control switch back up and we're gonna use the original harness for that. Obviously, this is the one piece we won't use because that hooked into the OEM head unit. So I'm just gonna put a piece of masking tape over the end of this and tuck it out of the way. But yeah, next up, we're just gonna hook up our um, harness to the climate control switch and pop it back into the dash. And I'm also going to take out those two brackets. So this is what it looks like without the bracket in there. You can see now I've got a lot of room back in there to tuck that harness in. And I put a piece of tape over that. There's the old uh, metal brackets. So now I've got the harness hooked up to the climate control switch it, right here itself. And now we're going to go ahead and place it back into the dashboard. And it just pops back in. You just click each side and it'll be nice and sturdy. And don't forget there's a couple Phillips screws, one on each side of this climate control switch that you'll need to replace before you put the trim back on. So once I pop this climate control switch in, this thing was super sturdy. Definitely no need for the metal brackets and I'm pretty happy with the fitment here. All we have to do now is just pop the trim back on. Okay, let's talk about the antenna bypass harness that comes with your uh, head unit setup. This is what it looks like right here. And you'll need this to bypass your current antenna, that little shark fin antenna on top. You'll no longer be using that. That'll just be for decorations and you'll have to plug it into your antenna module. Now, unfortunately, I have not been able to find the antenna module in the Honda Civic SI version. Now, this is a YouTuber. His channel is called Sal's Garage, and he's actually got a four-door touring automatic Civic, and he's definitely found his module. And this is the passenger side rear seat with the seat folded down here. And he's gonna pull this little, here's your seat folded down right here. And he's gonna pull this rubber molding back and then he's gonna pull this panel forward and you'll be able to see the um, antenna module that we're gonna bypass here. But I have not been able to find it on the SI. I've looked on this side and the driver's side and I pulled the little rubber molding back and looked in there, couldn't find anything to do with a, a little antenna module there. there so. 
<clears throat> so far I have not been able to find it, but we're gonna watch him now. You can see the module right there, and he's got the little bypass harness right there. So he's just gonna unplug those little um, connectors to this module, and then hook it up to that little harness there. So it's very simple once you actually find the module, but I'm not finding it so far on the SI, so I'm sorry about that. But here is what it looks like once you've bypassed it here. Pretty simple to do. It's no uh, really hard feat or anything like that. It's just, I cannot find it. And I've been looking at some uh, electrical schematics of the antenna system, but at this point, I still have not been able to locate it. So you're okay if you have a um, four door touring model, this is where you go to get it. Now, like I said, I'll post this in the description down below. You can watch this whole video if you want to. He has a really good YouTube channel and he's got a lot of civic stuff, but um, it is not in the SI, not in this area at least. So I'm gonna show you a panel that I pulled down into the uh, in the roof area around where the antenna actually hooks up and I still was unable to find it. So I'm gonna show you a clip of this right now. Here is the uh, back panel, the uh, back seat right here. You can see that. And then this is a panel above. You can see the little airbag or side air curtain right here. And I thought it might be up there, but nope, not up here. I looked all around and I thought it would be either this little black clip maybe, or this white clip over here. And, uh, it does not match up with the bypass harness set, setup that came with the join head unit. So this little um, harness right here is an extra one. So pay no attention to this. This is one they sent me and I did not use this. This is supposed to go to the radio. I guess this is just an extra one or for um, a touring model maybe. But this is the actual bypass harness and it does not fit up there. And like I said, I could not find the actual module down where the touring version has their module. So if you have an SI, you will not be able to use the radio unless you happen to personally know where that little module is yourself. Okay, at this point I went ahead and powered the unit up and it came right up into this screen. It's functioning great, super quick. I mean, just as fast as you could uh, click the icons, they respond nowhere near the kind of operation that the OEM head unit had. And you can um, also move these widgets around on your screen. If you don't like where they're sitting, you can swap them out. I think that's what they're called widgets, but we're not gonna talk too much about the settings. We're, we're just gonna talk about a basic setting that I wanna show you that'll make this whole thing function correctly with your car setup. You know, it just does depend whether you have a SI or a touring model or whatever, or base model, it does depend. You can see we've got tons of apps already. It comes preloaded with some apps. I added this Hondata app right here because I have a Hondata Tune and you can pretty much put any app you want to on here. It also um, comes, I think, stock with, like there, uh, there's YouTube right there and there's vehicle settings. Uh, but we want to focus on the vehicle settings right here. I wanna show you something under vehicle settings and then go to base info and vehicle personalization. Click that one. What you're looking for here is all these green check marks. You want these to be lit up. Um, they can turn gray if they're not activated, but you want to make sure that everything's lit up and functioning. That means that everything's accessible at this point because we've put the proper factory settings in. So that's what I wanna show you is the factory settings, um, how to adjust that. And there's a couple of ways you can do it. So we're gonna go under factory right here. I'm gonna press factory and we have to use the factory code, which is 3368, right there, and then hit confirm. Now we want to go under car model. This is the critical part here. You want to make sure you choose the correct car model and setup. So we want XP, that's the setting I've been using. This is under the CAN box type. There's a lots of different choices here and you may know of one that works even better, but the XP is working great for me. So I chose XP for CAN box type and obviously car, uh, brand we're going to choose honda 
obviously. And car model, we're going to choose Civic. You see, you can choose Accord and CRV if you want. But we're choosing Civic because that's what we have. And then last but not least, we have CAM box settings. We have, whoops, sorry about that. We have uh, 2016 to 2021 low and 2016 to 2021 high. So if you've installed this into a Civic SI or a touring model with an amplifier, you want to choose the high setting. Now, if you're running a base model or a uh, radio without an amp, you want to cho choose the low setting. So that is a big um, choice you have to make. Otherwise, things might not work correctly for you. All the buttons might not work correctly. So if you have an amp, choose high. And if you don't have an amp, choose low. And once you do that, then everything should function correctly here. There's obviously tons of things you can change. I mean, the sky's the limit. You can sit here literally for hours and play with this thing, and I have. So I'm not going to go through everything with you as far as the settings go, but I just kind of want to run through a few of the screens and show you what you have available. Tons of stuff to tweak and change. Um, the sky's the limit. I'm sure you'll have fun doing it. I did. It took me a while. And here's the Wi-Fi setup, data usage, device. You can, you can go through and change your sound, your GPS, display stuff, apps. You know, like a Android setup, you can go through different pathways to change the um, same settings. You, there's more than one pathway to get to um, things that you want to change. So you'll have fun, I'm sure, doing that. There's uh, developer options. You can even go into that. Time and date. I mean, the sky's the li literally the limit with this thing. I'm very impressed with the unit, but it really works very fast. You can see as fast as you can push something is as quickly as it will, you know, work. So. So the most important thing that you do is you need to make sure that you select the right car model setup. Um, after you do that, everything else is really easy. You just take your time and go through and set this thing up exactly the way you want it. I'm super impressed with this unit. The sound on this thing is just amazing. It's no comparison to the original head unit. And that's the reason I bought this is because the sound quality. You've got an awesome equalizer here and you've got tons of settings that you can tweak to get the sound just the way you want it. So, I mean, that is one of the best parts of this whole thing is that it's got so much you can do with the sound and that was my main focus when I purchased the unit. Um, obviously, other people will have other issues that they want to focus on like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and all the apps and, you know, anything, all the other things you can do with this unit. But mine was the sound and the sound is incredible. You won't be disappointed with the sound, trust me. So I also wanted to show you just how quick everything runs. We're in YouTube now. And let's go ahead and check my channel. This is kind of a plug, I guess. <laughs> I'm plugging myself. But yeah, just look how fast this thing responds. And it's just a really great unit. And I also had another video that you might be interested in. Now that you've got this head unit installed, I did a uh, Civic SI speaker upgrade. So if you're interested in replacing your speakers, I've got a great video on that. So sorry about the plug, but I thought you might be interested in that and I'll link it below as well. But yeah, this unit is definitely worth the money. I would recommend it to anyone. And if this video helped you out, don't forget to give me a big old fat thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. And until next time, you know what to do. Just keep on repeating.